Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the webinar today, Keeping Your Team Engaged in Difficult Times. Uh, my name is Simon Hazeldean, one of the senior consultants at uh, Mentor Group. <clears throat> I work in um, our sales transformation area and also in our management leadership develop development area. Uh, I'm also an author and a speaker. Um, I speak at conferences and, and events, and I've had the privilege of working in over 30 countries interacting with tens of thousands of leaders so i think i've i've sort of seen the good the bad and the ugly of uh, management and leadership practice over the years so we want to today share some key thoughts some key ideas to provide some support for all of the people uh, leading teams managing people going through this uh, difficult time i'm being supported and uh, on today's webinar by our uh, mental groups operation manager matt webb matt say hi yeah good afternoon everybody i'm sitting away in the background here just uh i'm gonna be answering your questions as they come in um as simon's called out earlier there's a question button at the bottom of your screen in the toolbar so if you've got any questions you want asked along the way please put them in there we'll get to as many as we possibly can at the moment we've got uh, just under 70 people on so I'm, I'm expecting lots of good questions from you today Thank you, Matt. Fantastic. And uh, we will be making the recording and the slides um, from today uh, available to you folks if, if you want to make use of those, share those with, with colleagues, etc. So let's, let's kind of get started. Um, we're facing obviously very, very challenging times and many of us are managing people and teams that have become remote and isolated. And most of us have never experienced a challenge on this scale. So we've, we've no experience to draw upon. So we're hoping that today we'll provide you with some thoughts, some ideas, some inspiration, and, and some support to help us through these challenging, challenging times that we're going to be facing. Um, we're gonna focus on the vital actions that leaders must be taking to help their teams, helping your people to remain engaged and positive positive and productive during this difficult time. And I'm using the term leader consciously and deliberately. I know some people may use the phrase line manager or manager, but I think leadership is people are going to be looking to you for your leadership through these difficult times. And irrespective of job or function, leadership really fundamentally, I think, is an attitude of mind as much as it's anything else. It's definitely not a position that somebody occupies on the organization chart. Uh, as I say, please pop any questions. And we'll attempt to answer those as, as, we, as we go through. Uh, we may not be able to field all your questions during the webinar today, but you're very welcome to email us or get in touch afterwards. And if we can help, we will do so. So just want to do a little check-in. Um, we're going to do, run a check-in poll just to sort of test the temperature. Uh, and, the, and the question that the poll will pop up in a moment is, how confident are you feeling about your organization's ability to lead people effectively during this challenging time. Now, if you don't see the poll pop up, it may be the way you've got your screens and your browser configured. It might be hiding. So if you absolutely can't see the poll, please feel free to respond and send your, send your response in the chat function if you, if you want to. So Matt, and poll live. The answers are coming in thick and fast, which is great news. Fantastic. Highly responsive group that you are today, which is wonderful. I'm going to give you about another 15, 20 seconds. We've got about maybe 30, 40 of you still to answer. Good stuff. Keep going. Another 10 seconds. And I'm going to close the poll down. Okay. No. Okay, there we go, Simon. Okay, so we've got, we got a bit of a spread there. That's good. I'm not liking to see that, that confidence thing. Fantastic. So hopefully um, we are going to be able to move all of those up a little bit. I'll give you some thoughts, some inspiration, some ideas. Okay, fantastic. So let's just uh, close that. And so what we're going to cover today, we're going to look at six areas. Um, firstly, why leadership is so important um, in the current reality. Secondly, understanding the psychological impact that it's having on people. Then we look at the engagement. What is it and how to maximize it? 
then the important thing about treating individuals as individuals and understanding individual challenges that people are facing, what I'm calling different strokes for different folks, then we'll look at the importance of having a, an effective communication and contact strategy. And then finally, and very, very importantly, I think making sure that you're looking after yourself and you're leading yourself. So let me go into the, the first area, why leadership is so important in this current reality. An interesting piece of research that I often use when I'm working with leaders is based on some um, data from MIT originally, that 80 to 90% of employees' behavior is determined by what leaders pay attention to, what they measure, they reward, and they control. The leaders' role modeling and the coaching they provide to their people. And then finally, how leaders respond to critical incidents. So when we have very difficult times, people look and observe leaders very carefully to gauge how they are behaving, to give them guidance on how they should be behaving. So what I'll say to leaders when I'm working with them using this data is fundamentally 80 to 90% of your people's behavior is determined by your behavior as a leader so it's that's why your leadership is going to be so critically important leadership is always important but it's critically important now and your teams and people will be looking to you for direction and guidance and and other things as we go through good leadership is good leadership i don't have any simple tricks and tips that we can just pull out the bag that make the situation suddenly straightforward and very very easy but we will cover some of those principles as we go through. Uh, I think a great quote on leadership, particularly in the times we're facing now, is from the American businessman Max Dupree, who said that the first uh, responsibility of a leader is to define reality. The last is to say thank you. And in between, the leader is a servant. Well, we definitely, and I will talk about the need to help people to define and navigate the reality that we're now facing. And that the thank you, as you'll see a little later in terms of making feel that people feel valued and appreciated, very, very important. And obviously, yes, we absolutely have to serve our people uh, as we go through this situation. Matt, any, any questions that have come through so far? Anything to pick up Not on? Not all quite on the question in front so far. Fantastic. Okay, so let me move on then. Understanding the psychological impact. Now, I appreciate the model you can see on the screen, uh, Maslow's hierarchy needs. I know it's a, it's a pretty old model. It's been around such, such a long time, but I just think it's so well known that I think it provides a really simple illustration. Um, the, the model proposes that people, human beings are fundamentally need seeking and as one level of need is satisfied, another comes on to replace it. I'm sure everybody on the call on the webinar will have seen this. Down the bottom, the physiological needs of food and water, then safety and shelter and social needs. Now, what's happening at the moment, the situation we're facing is that all the fundamental needs down the bottom of the, the pyramid there are under pressure and are under threat. So that, that is going to be creating a very stressful, difficult, challenging situation for lots of people. For example, a lot of us get our social needs met through the working environment. And that has suddenly been taken away and the isolation that people are having to go through as well as also affecting that. So I think it's just to, just to re-emphasize that we just need to be very conscious, I think, and sensitive to the effect that this is probably having, having on our people. So moving into the, into the third area, what, what's engagement and what can we do and how can we maximize it? Well, lots of organizations have very correctly got a good, strong, strong focus on employee engagement. You know, the higher the level of employee engagement you have in your organization, the more willingness, flexibility and adaptability that people are prepared to show. And our, all of our companies, all of our organizations, our employee engagement is going to be absolutely pressure tested as we go, as we go through this. One way of defining what engagement is, is it's the emotional and intellectual connection that people have with their company and with their employer. And it's sometimes described as winning hearts and minds, therefore, the emotional and the intellectual connection. So I think as leaders, it's very important we make sure that we are focusing and refocusing on, on feeding the mind, if you like, feeding that intellectual need, 
with regular communication, which I'll come on to talk about in, in a short while, uh, but also feeding the heart as well with those, those positive emotional connections that we have with our people. Any neuroscientist will obviously tell you how important emotion is in the human brain and in the human in the human nervous system and so that's something i think we should really be focusing on fascinating piece of research um showed that uh, there are many drivers of employee engagement but one of the one piece of research showed that the strongest driver was a sense of feeling valued and a sense of feeling involved and now people are obviously going to be quite isolated and disconnected. So let's really ramp up the work we do on making sure that our people are feeling valued. And then with the involvement, I think a great thing to always remember as a leader is you don't have to have all the answers. You can use your teams, involve your teams, brainstorming, coming up with thoughts and ideas get that creativity, get that really good intelligence that is out there in your teams, get people collaborating, get them involved and thinking about how collectively together you can move forwards and overcome the challenges that we're all obviously going to be facing. And I do wonder if some leaders may realise for the first time what fantastic people and fantastic teams they've got so really and it's a win-win because if you get them involved that's going to help with them feeling engaged it's also going to bring you some fantastic ideas and potentially some answers as well and a concept i use when i'm working with leaders on on this topic is what i call the psychological bank account um and, and it's, it's a way of thinking that between you and each member of your team, between them and the organization, there exists this psychological bank account. And like a normal bank account, if you're not making enough deposits into it and you try to make withdrawals, you end up going overdrawn. And as a result of the COVID-19 situation, we've probably been making lots of withdrawals on our people, asking them to work in different ways, do things quickly, change, change what they've been doing. And their working lives are also and personal lives are being disrupted. So making sure that we as leaders are making positive deposits into those psychological bank accounts, showing support, showing empathy, ramping up the communication, the connection, the thanks to go back to Max Dupree's, thanking people for their flexibility, thanking them for their understanding, involving them. Make sure, please, you don't go overdrawn with the psychological bank accounts between you and every member of your team. Matt, do we have any uh, any questions or comments at this stage? Yeah, we do indeed. So the first one relates to Maslow. Mm. Um, the, the, the model you showed, the triangle, two slides ago or three slides ago. Yep. And the question is, how do we position this with our people without you know, meaning to come across or sound like a counsellor or shrink? Yeah, yeah, and I think absolutely, let's be absolutely important here. Um, we're, we're leaders and managers. We're just for a moment, just from a health and safety point of view, if you do suspect that any of your people are feeling in a bad way, you know, you've got to make sure they're getting proper support from somebody who's, who's, who's suit, suitably qualified. I would position this as, as making sure you are demonstrating that you understand the pressures that they're being, that they're, they're facing. They will, un they will understand that. But sometimes explaining things using models like that just maybe helps people to understand why they are feeling the way they are and that it's okay to feel that way and it it's understandable. So hopefully, hope that helps. It does. And uh, we've got two, two more questions in here. Um, so thank you, Barbara, for sending these in. It's a really good question. Do you think it's realistic to have medium to high employee engagement despite poor to medium quality of leadership that is a tough but yeah that's an interesting one i would certainly say that you're going to find the going tough you know if, if somebody's not a great leader in 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 the reality prior to where we are now their their leadership is absolutely going to be pressure tested but i think probably supporting all the leaders making sure they're aware of the the key things that they can do to drive engagement 
would absolutely probably um, would would absolutely help. But yeah, I think the the pressure that people at leaders are going to be under, I think, is is going to expose some some flaws if they're there. Unfortunately, so it might be time to really make sure they're given the support they need to be able to think about altering their behaviour accordingly. Very good. And then the last question is, is the psycho bank account, psycho, uh, psychological bank account, the psycho bank account would probably be something quite different uh, to be inter interpreted as the emotional bank account? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be there's going to be a significant emotional contribution to that. Um, and I think a lot of things that are going to make the biggest impact are going to be those sort of positive emotional strokes. But also, please don't underestimate the importance of the intellectual thing about, you know, making sure people understand um, objectively what's happening and, and, and what's going on. I think the two, two need to work in tandem. Are we good to move on, Matt? Just one more in. This is a quite an interesting one. And then we will move on after this yeah. one. We're good for time. Do you think it's important for all of your teams to realise that you are also in the same position um, and that you've got a level of vulnerability as a leader? Yes. And I think, I think that is an important thing. You'll hear me a little bit later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to something that will, I think will have relevance to, to, that, to that question. Um, yes, they may be looking to you for answers and you may not have those answers and I think that's okay to, to say that to them, that you're, you're busy working on it. I think also showing that you, the situation that you're facing, that maybe, you know, it's difficult for you working from home sometimes, will give them permission sometimes to feel the same way. I think what they want to see is an authentic human being who, who clearly cares about them uh, rather than some slickly polished uh, example of, of leadership as we go through. Okay, going to move on then, Matt. Um, area number four, different different strokes for different folks. I think a big mistake to make would just be to assume that all of our employees are sort of in the same boat. Everyone's in the same, in the same position. I think we need to understand those differences. Now, as a general comment for all of our employees, we do need to be defining and discussing this, this new working reality that everybody is, is facing. Um, last week, I was running a virtual sales program. We, we moved it from a, from a traditional face-to-face -face environment to a virtual. And I had a group of salespeople. And one, I did a check-in at the start, see how they were doing. How are you finding it working from home? They'd previously all been internal sales working in an office environment. And one of them said something very interesting. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm feeling guilty about working from home. It feels strange. I feel guilty. So I'm working longer. I'm putting in more work and more effort because it feels strange. Now, that's a rather, um, uh, you know, crazy thing to feel guilty because you've been, you've been put into that situation. But that, that was how they were feeling. So I think we need to be setting some expectations and some ways of working with people, you know, changing rules, bending the rules, maybe defining some new rules, making sure we're encouraging people to take regular breaks to but it's okay if they've got their kids at home if there's a bit of background noise from the children so so be it you know um starting encouraging start and end times the day starting to encourage breaks letting them enjoy the good bits maybe having the radio on in the background listening to a bit of music while they're working if, if that if that's appropriate um, and then making sure we take account of individual differences and circumstances, depending on who they are and what they're doing and their family situation and their, and their home environment. We've got to be thinking about those different people will be facing different pressure. So let's let's not just lump everyone into the same into the same box. And I think we've got to be very careful about making assumptions. Some assumptions we could make is that I, I've spoken to, you know, Louisa in my team today. Uh, and I assume Louise is okay tomorrow, but things, things might change. Situations might change as people spend longer and longer periods working um, in this way. You know, people may go over a tipping point where they, they, find things, they find things really difficult. And I think as well, because things are changing so rapidly at the moment, just agreements you've got. So we were, um, just give you an example from, from Mentor Group. We had a a virtual kickoff for a sales transformation project with stakeholders from 
a number of countries on the call. And Zoe, one of our fantastic office team, our client support person, uh, taken all the notes. And Zoe and I, we finished the call with the client at about five o'clock. And I agree with Zoe that we connect at 10 o'clock the next morning to get out all the notes written up and everything ready to go. And just, just before we, the following day, I just sent Zoe a quick Teams uh, message, still okay for 10 o'clock. And the response came back that I've had a ton of stuff come in, you know, from 8.30 to, 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 to 9.30. Would it be possible to push the meeting back to 11? I responded, do you want to go later than that if you're a bit under pressure? And we ended up speaking about two o'clock. So, you know, understanding things, situations will change as people are serving clients, looking after clients. And I think we've got to be careful to do that. And also make sure, of course, that we're showing due empathy for the situation. And maybe we're going to have to cut some people some slack sometimes if they need to go and look after relatives or the elderly relatives or something like that. Also, then, you know, because the queues for shops are, are getting are getting long and things like that. So, you know, show, show some empathy to the situation people are facing. And then I think as we'll come on to section five, in a moment, which is all about the communication and the contact strategy. So I think agreeing how and how often you are going to be communicating with your people. That will also help to give a certain sense of routine and rhythm to their to the days in their new environment. So uh, on the subject of communication, we're going to go for another poll here. Uh, communication poll, Matt, if you could uh, kick off the communication poll, folks. There we go. How would you rate communication in your organization at the moment? Good. And we have a few questions coming in as well, Simon, for when there's a convenient place. Okay. Yep. Um, again, uh, about 50 of you have answered so far. So I'll give it another 20 seconds. Still time to vote. Another two or three seconds and then I'll close this down. Okay. There we go, Simon. You should be able to see the results now. Okay. Hey, that's not looking that's not looking too bad. That's good. So very good. Some people have clearly got the message already. Quite a lot of goods, okays there, some, some, some needs improvement. Okay, overall, not too bad, but uh, let, let's just um, see, see what your thinking is after I've shared some thoughts. So you can cover the communication section, Matt, and then um, we'll come, come back to questions if that's okay. Yeah, just before you do that, uh, just to um, uh, actually within this, this poll area, a couple of good chats coming in about people who are sharing, uh, you know, virtual coffee mornings every day, getting together as a team in different ways. Yeah, um, so some great examples where sometimes you don't need a need or a purpose for a meeting, except yep. for getting together and having a chat. And, uh, and Jazz, thank you for sending that through. A couple of people are responding really positively to that. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a brilliant, you'll, you'll, um, you'll, you'll see uh, me refer to informal communication very, very shortly. But yeah, not everything has to have a reason and a purpose. I mean, it's just the purpose is just to connect with people, have a conversation. Got to remember that happens informally in the office. So you'll see me, you'll see me reference that. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that input, folks. So communication. Um, We've got to make sure we don't take our eye off the health and safety. You know, it's still number one priority for all of us as leaders to make sure our people are safe, even more important in certain ways now than obviously the context might have shifted. But just because people maybe aren't, aren't working in a warehouse or factory environment, it doesn't mean we can take the eye off the ball on that. Um, two leaders, two senior leaders that I respect enormously that I've worked with over the years on two separate occasions, they were in a QA and a session and they were both asked what was their single biggest learning as a leader. And it was interesting to see both of them said almost the same thing, that they were absolutely amazed how much communication is necessary in an organization for everybody to know what is going on. And I sort of encapsulate that and just say, communicate, communicate, communicate. Communication needs to very badly go up and increase um, at this time so making sure the frequency of communication is really really ramped up 
making sure we're communicating consistently. If there is uncertainty, if there's a communication vacuum, it will probably be very quickly filled with rumor and worry and concern. Obviously, people feeling concerned at these times. Be very candid in your communications. I think we've got to try hard to get the balance right between hope and optimism, but being grounded in, in reality as well. So we're not giving people artificial expectations hopes etc be confident in your communication you may be feeling uncertain I think this was the this goes back to that point about being authentic and sharing a little bit so for example you, you can say something like I don't know yet what we're going to do about this or I don't know yet what the situation is going to be but what I am confident about I am confident we've got great people I am confident we've got a great team and I am confident that if we work and collaborate together, we will be able to find a solution to the challenges that face us. So you can communicate uncertainty in a, in a confident way, as, as paradoxical as that might sound. Keep it absolutely clear. You may have to repeat it a few times to make sure that people, it, it, it rests on people because they may be very, very distracted. And be calm. Piece of interesting piece of research. I popped the research link down that observing others experiencing stress caused observers to feel stress. That was in a, a laboratory testing environment. So I think, yes, being authentic, but being careful and considered about how you're communicating not just what what you're communicating and of course communication should be a two-way process we need to keep that communication and that feedback loop going particularly so you can temperature test and see, see where everyone is a great expression i heard one time is the leader doesn't just get the message across the leader is the message so we need to think about the not only the what we're delivering but the how we're delivering so that it rests well and hits people well um people's emotions are in are going to be quite raw their senses are in overdrive so we need to be you know they're going to be watching you closely for for, for guidance as we go through uh matt any uh, questions and comments please at this stage yeah keep the chat going guys there's some good uh, best practice sharing in there right now uh, on the point I was mentioning a moment ago. Two questions in here. One uh, first from uh, Adriana, um, and it's relating to uh, insights, discovery, or disc or social styles. Yes. So, yeah. And the question is, you know, how do you flex your leadership style in times like these to people with different behavioral preferences? Yeah, and I think I think you've, you, this is part of thinking about people's individual individual needs. Um, I think using using whichever model you do, insights, disc, prism, prism, brain mapping, etc. I think thinking of who who am I communicating with? What do I understand about the way they they um, they think and the way that they behave? And maybe thinking that some people, for example, will want more detail and more information. Others will will have a fairly short. Uh, attention span for communication i think also remembering of course that that uh, people with say an extroversion preference are probably going to have uh, typically a higher need for social interaction than those maybe of an introverted preference but i definitely would be very careful not to make any sort of big assumptions on that on that point yeah, I would agree. The, the next question I'm going to leave anonymous. Communication is good, but I'm spending all of my time in check-in meetings. Uh, can there be too much communication? Yeah, I think now let's let's be careful here. Checking, I, I'm taking that to me, Matt. I think checking to see what's happening all the time. Um, I'm, I'm going to come on to in a moment or two talk about the difference between checking in with people and checking up on people i think if we've got leaders managers that are a bit command and control that's going to be amplified and exacerbated in this situation because they're feeling certainly uh, insecure i think you know we need to think about trusting our people here you know let's uh, ernest hemingway said the best way to find out if you can trust someone is to trust them and I, I understand i'm not saying we don't have a need for control in the business and that we have but of course we do but i think we need to temper it based on the conditions that we've that we've got too much box filling and ticking off of things i think is, is going to be very very counterproductive good and that quote was uh, was liked that's good and then uh, just a comment from barbara in the chat you can see this and read it in full um emphasizing the point that at times like this leaders need to listen more 
Perhaps and they are talking. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think if I can uh, just just show you um, something that resonates exactly with that. Um, when I was looking at virtual leadership many, many years ago, when teams were starting to be remote and virtual and bringing in matrix organizations, I was introduced to something called the two times rule, which I think goes, goes directly. So when we're working virtually with people, and the rule states two times more communication, more often, more clarity, two times more disciplined, and two times more listening. Absolutely very, very important point for Barbara. I'm actually going to propose, folks, I was talking to John Phillips, so one of our colleagues who ran one of our earlier webinars. I was talking through what I was going to be covering with you today. And uh, John and I felt that maybe a three times or a four times rule might actually be appropriate. That, that two times rule was for virtual teams in a more regular, normal business environment. I think the one we're in now, we might have to consider at least turning up the volume on some of those I think I'd also say let I try to encourage people to come on camera it helps to make that sort of connection with people and that's part of the new reality the new rules that you know what it's okay if you've got a really bad pair of curtains behind you or something or maybe the backdrop doesn't look professional according to you know it's not an office it's not an office environment but i think it's much easier to make a connection with people when you can see people last night my family had a we had virtual drinks together, my brother and his family, my family, my mum and dad, and lovely for, for the grandparents to see their grandchildren. I think that on-camera connection made, made a very powerful sort of motivational, emotional um, boost and made emotional difference so they can actually see. And, uh, you know, this is about relaxing some of the rules. John, who I mentioned, you know, I've been on, we've been on calls with him and his daughter Amelia is, is, was working in the background in John's office at home and we all kind of said, hi to Amelia and she said hi to us I had a client on a call a couple of days ago uh, their, their pet dog made made an appearance I just helps people and human beings you know to connect I think and uh, that's an emotional an emotional level and linked to the to the communication obviously is the contact strategy and in keeping with communicate 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 contact 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 but I think we need to make sure we do this in a in a considered manner which i'll come on to in a second i mentioned this earlier we need to make sure we are being seen as checking in on how people are and how things are going rather than checking up on them in an atmosphere of sort of low trust you know we we should be managing people by output not by input by output not not attendance and you know unless you've got your recruitment desperately badly wrong you can trust your people they will do a great job for you. The informal communication, the great point that was mentioned earlier, is those coffee machine, water cooler, bump into each other in the corridor, chat to each other over lunch. Those all go missing when people are remotely. So fantastic ideas that were, that were being mentioned to get people to get together informally for a coffee or for lunch or for a, a drink after work. And I think make sure you agree and stick to um, within the informal, uh, aside from the informal, if you're having meetings, make sure you're sticking to a regular cadence. I think we've got to be very careful of scattered scheduling, just assuming everybody has lots more time and are instantly available because they're working from home. So I think we've just be, got to be careful of overloading and stopping people working and doing other things that are important in their lives, looking after their, their children as well, for example, being, being one of them. And I think the last thing, the, the sixth area before we go for some, for some final questions, is about leading yourself. And this is about a concept I call proper selfishness. I was taught by a mentor of mine many years ago, the concept of proper selfishness. Folks, you can only serve your people well if you are well yourself. You can only make good decisions if you're in a good place so it is critically and very very important you, you saw 80 to 90 percent of your behavior is going to be determining the behavior of, of sorry the 80 to 90 percent of your employees behavior determined by your behavior so please make sure you're also taking care of yourself regular breaks regular exercise get those important things you have to be there to be in a good place to serve to serve your people so look after yourself as well as looking after your people and, and a concept 
that I think I'd like to suggest to you. Some of you may be familiar with this. This came from the great book by Tim Galway, The Inner, the Inner Game of Work. Tim's an incredible uh, guru in the field of coaching. And in The Inner Game of Work, he tells a story by way of an example to illustrate the principle of stop. And so back in, say, the 15th century, imagine that... Um, that you're, you are in a valley between two tall mountains. You're in the bottom of the valley and you're fighting your enemy with swords. So you're right down in the bottom of the valley, active fighting, momentum, quite a narrow focus. You're very occupied with the here and now and the, and the momentum. Many leaders tell me that working in the modern organizations feels often like you're in the bottom of the valley fighting that battle. And Tim says in the book, you take a few steps up the valley side, the intensity lessens, your perspective starts to change. And if you go even further up, you start to have this more expanded view of what's going on. But also as you step away from that hurly-burly, from that action, the emotional center of the brain get a chance to calm, the prefrontal cortex will become more active and you're able to have more of a clearer head and better able to make to make those decisions. Um, and, and the STOP stands for stepping back, thinking, giving yourself time to think, part of proper selfishness, organizing your thoughts so that you can then proceed back down into the action, but with greater clarity over what you need to do. And my personal experience is that I most need to do that is when I feel like I've got the least time to be able to do it. By the way, it's also a great concept to think about coaching your people and helping them take a few moments, step back, let's have a think, organize some thoughts, and then proceed back with greater, with greater clarity. It's one of the most powerful things I think I've ever learned as a leader was the, was the principle of stop. So just before we go for some final questions, just want to summarize, summarize some thoughts. Your leadership is absolutely critical and important as we go through this making sure you're showing empathy, but also what I would call a concept of having a hard head and a soft heart. That's linked to the stop concept. So you're able to make careful, considered decisions with a clear, hard head, but you can implement them and deal with your people with a soft, empathetic heart. The importance of driving engagement, winning hearts and minds, helping people feel valued and involved, Thinking of individual differences and the diversity having your team, different strokes for different folks, communicate, 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 contact, 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 and very importantly, proper selfishness, look after yourself and step back, think, organize, proceed. And please make sure folks and encourage others in your organizations, leaders need to be very visible. Maybe get your senior leaders on camera, get some videos of your senior leader. They need to be seen by their teams. Be accessible within the confines of proper selfishness and looking after yourself. Your, to, to use an overused expression, your virtual office door needs to be open for people and be present. Resist the temptation to be doing emails and doing other little bits and pieces in the background when you're communicating virtually with your people. They will know. <laughs> they will know. Uh, Matt, uh, questions, sir? Any questions or comments? Yeah, one comment and then two questions. So first of all, we're very aware today, guys, that this is, uh, except for the chat and the questions, this is more one way. And a lot of the principles that we've talked about today encourage absolutely two-way the volume of people that we've got on just makes that a bit more difficult to do within 45 minutes so all of your comments all of your chat very much appreciated thank you for doing those yeah, very much. two questions i've got uh, some great questions actually these two um from an anonymous as a team they're very close do we have any tips uh of things they could do together in short to ensure that that bond stays there that it's not broken during remote working yeah, I would go back to the comments that, were, that have been made earlier from people. I think it's having that informal time together will bond people together. Also, getting them together to, uh, to solve problems, to agree ways forward, to, to brainstorm thoughts and ideas, giving them opportunities to collaborate, to make sure, collaborate virtually to make sure that those, those bonds aren't broken. Yeah, I'd add to that. Where many of uh, the, the the team of mentor 
do lots of exercise. I'm a runner. A couple of my colleagues are also runners. We use some of the apps to to check in and also set each other some some goals on, you know, frequency of runs we're going to do in a week. Things like that that just get a conversation going uh, of we found to work really well. Um, there's a question here that says, sadly, there'll be team members that may use this as an excuse to hide, I not work too hard. What yeah. tips do you have to manage them virtually in a considered and respectful way? Yeah, and I think I uh, this is this is this is going to be one of those difficult ones because yes, you have to make allowances for individual circumstances that people are facing, and I think you've got to you've got to be reasonable about that. But you probably know who they are because they're probably not going to be the most productive employees when they're in an office environment either. I think we've got to be very careful about you know treating everybody uh, tarring everybody with the same brush in the same way that you might have to have one of those difficult performance conversations you know in in a, in a regular business environment that's a one to one conversation maybe you've got to have um, and to and to go and to go through the situation they're facing, make sure anything they need in to be able to work properly and productively has, if at all possible, been provided. And then maybe you've got to have a frank, open, and honest conversation with that person, and to say that the, the way the situation is at the moment, it's not appropriate for for other people in the team to having to be carry carry that person because of the challenges everybody's facing goes back to what you were saying earlier about outputs rather than inputs simon i guess Abs absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and i think but go tr tr treat exceptions by exception and one final question before we wrap up today and for the person who sent this in this is going to be difficult enough because you're not able to call this out so i'll read the question exactly as it is um it's about you as a manager any advice to us who are total extroverts now you get my point knowing all those rules but still feel imprisoned by the home office yeah i think i think um uh, extroversion about where you draw your energy from so i think finding finding ways to socialize virtually pushing up maybe the amount of informal communication is is going to help but yeah if you're if you're a very social kind of person then obviously you will probably feel that feel that <clears throat> more than others but i think i would look for opportunities informal social opportunities with team members colleagues friends etc to 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 ramp to ramp that up and hopefully that'll help to compensate um a little bit for that so folks um we're obviously happy to take any any other questions um you know feel free to email us i'll give you the address in a moment or two just want to really thank you very much for your time today we really appreciate your time and we just want to wish you every success in being the leader that your people need and deserve at this challenging time and if we can be of any assistance uh, we will obviously be sending you the slides and the recording of the webinar if you've got any questions you want to know about some of the stuff we do uh, and we can maybe help then you know remote mentorgroup.co.uk feel feel free to do that F please follow us on linkedin where we'll be posting a lot of thoughts and ideas and contents as the weeks develop i'll also be doing that on my personal linkedin account as well feel, feel free to connect and if we can help you in any way please just fire a quick message or question to us uh, and when you leave this we'll, we'll just have a quick survey as you leave so if you could complete that your feedback is very very val valued indeed and uh, tomorrow I believe it's two o'clock driving productive virtual meetings with one of my colleagues Mark Ward and for those of you with American um, colleagues will be running some uh, these webinars again next week um, if you've got colleagues on uh, America in America time they uh, will be scheduling some webinars that be a little bit more US time zone time zone friendly Matt anything uh, from you just before we close just thanks again guys and, and stay safe yeah thank you and, and um, we've um, we do appreciate we have so many people on today we weren't able to to communicate in a two-way manner you know we would obviously like like to do so um, but just numbers numbers prohibited it but uh, thank you really very very much for your comments your interactivity uh, just want to wish you good luck